Okay, what's up everybody? Today we're going to talk about relative joint work. And so while we walk, we've got muscles spanning each of the three major lower extremity joints, the hip, the knee, and the ankle. And while we're walking, these joints, or the muscles spanning these joints rather, are performing work, and this is what helps us move. And so I've plotted here the ankle, the knee, and the hip joint powers during a single support phase of walking. And when I say single support phase, I mean one support phase of walking, uh, not the single support phase. Okay, so uh, what we can do with these joint power curves is take the integral to get the amount of work being done at each joint. And one of the things that's very common uh, to see in the literature is biomechanists will take not only the individual joints work, but they will sum the joint work together across all three joints to get total work. And then they'll take the percent contribution from each individual joint to that total. And so it would look something like this, where you've got relative contributions total work from each of the three joints. And you can see right off the bat, the ankle joint doing a lot of this work, close to 50% during normal uh, level ground walking. This is, I believe, at 1.2 meters per second. Okay, so I'm going to walk through some MATLAB code to show you how to calculate relative joint work. <clears throat> so prior to starting the video, I created a variable that just contains hip, knee, and ankle joint powers. Um, for, a, for one support phase. And so the first thing I'm going to do is what I do every time is in case we're starting from scratch, I just like to clear everything out. And then I'm going to go ahead and load uh, our file that has the data. And I called this joint kinetics example.mat. And <clears throat> I'm going to load that. And I'll just show you this is coming in as a struct called vars. It's got moments and powers. We'll call on the subfield powers. And inside of this is ankle, knee, and hip. And it's just a single column that contains the ankle, knee, and hip joint powers, respectively. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is find each joint individual positive and negative work. So we're going to do relative uh, relative positive and relative negative work in this video. Let's go ahead and start with the hip. For uh, hip positive work, we were we're just gonna we're gonna use the traps. This is a built-in MATLAB function. I use a trapezoidal method for numerical integration. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call on bars dot powers. Dot hip. This is going to get our hip joint power, and to only get positive, what we're going to do is we're going to vectorize, and we're going to call on vars dot powers dot hip, and we're going to say only take uh, the the values within that that are greater than zero. And uh, <laughs> I always forget to do this. Make these work values relative to time rather than relative to the frame at which we're collecting. We need to know the frame rate. In this case, it's 100 frames per second or 100 hertz. And so after we run traps, we go ahead and divide by that frame rate. All right, let's see what that gives us. Yeah, and just to show you what this looks like here. Oops. Uh, just to show you kind of what that vectorization looks like, it's only giving us the positive values, so you won't see any of the negative values that are on the hip joint power curve here. Okay, so that's our, how we get hip positive work. You can probably already guess what I'm going to do to get hip joint negative work. Change the name accordingly, and then instead of calling the power curve where it's greater than zero, we're going to call it well, where it's less than zero. Okay, and I'm going to just go ahead and copy this. I'm going to do the same thing for the knee. Of course, I'll change the names where I need to. So knee, knee, knee. You can get into a little bit of trouble doing this copy and paste thing if you forget to change some of the names. So you always got to be careful. Knee. And then we're also going to do this for the ankle. Give ourselves a little bit of room. <clears throat> Change the names accordingly. And again, what we're doing right now is we're just getting each joint's individual positive and negative work. And then 
what we'll do afterwards is we'll sum all these together to get total positive and total negative work. So this is ankle, ankle. Okay, so let's just run these, make sure they run. Yep, everything looks good. All the positives should be positive, all the negatives should be negative. Obviously, those look good. Uh, and now what we're going to do is get total work, both positive and negative. So we'll say total pause work is equal to um, hip pause work plus knee pause work plus ankle pause work. Okay, let's run that, make sure it runs. Simple addition, <clears throat> perfect. And now we'll do the same thing for negative work. Total negative work, just change all of these accordingly. Okay, and now our final step is a rel really, really easy code here. <clears throat> final step is just to get uh, relative work. So we'll do hip rel positive work is equal to hip pause work um, divided by uh, total pause work. All right. Oh, and if you want to get that as a percentage uh, from 0 to 100, what you want to do is go ahead and then multiply that by uh, 100. All right. Let's just look what it looks like there. 30%. <coughs> Okay, so now we're just going to do this for, oops, uh, knee, changing these where you need to, total stays the same, of course, this is the ankle, this is the ankle, so these are our relative positive works, Let's just make sure those run, they all run. Ankle is 52. Yeah, ankle does a ton, man. Uh, the hip is 30, and the knee is 17. Okay, now I'm just going to copy these, paste them, give ourselves a little bit of room, and we're going to do the same thing for negative work. We'll see if those distributions are the same for both positive and negative work. Uh, I'll give you a hint just because I know they're not. <laughs> uh, during negative work, it, uh, the knee tends to do a little bit more, I believe, than it does during positive work. Oh, we also need to change these when we're doing negative. Total's different. Let's run these. And I'll plot these in just a second as a pie chart. Yeah. Oh, total neg work. Oh, did I not run this? Evaluate. Yeah, there we go. Now it runs. All right, before we plot, I am going to um, just do something. This is really easy, just to increase um, the rigor of this code, add a little test coverage to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the sum of all of these, so let's just grab it like this. The sum of all of these obviously should be 100. And so what I'm going to do is just run something. So that's hip, knee, and ankle, so the sum of these things should be 100 because they should add up to 100%, right? So just to test it, make sure. Okay, that one's good, got 100 there. Now we'll copy that, paste it, and we'll say sum, neg, we'll go through and change these accordingly. <clears throat> make sure the same thing for negative work. There we go, 100. Okay, so that's, I mean, it's not a very rigorous test, but it is a test, right? I'm really big on trying to increase test coverage for all of my code. All right, let's go ahead and plot these as the, the pie charts that we were looking at before. So figure, let's see, I haven't, hit, I haven't actually made a pie chart in a while. Um, oh, you know what I think we have to do? Actually, I think we have to add these into a single a single uh, matrix. So I think what we have to do is we'll say all 
pause is equal to, um, I think we have to do this. I hope this works. Pause work. Okay, so let's just take that and then copy. I'll just do it for the positive work first, and then if it works, we'll do it for the negative work too. If not, I'll be pulling out the pulling out a Google search during the video. I think I think you just call pi. Let's see if that works. All pause, and then let's give it uh, a title of positive work. And then I believe it pulls them in in order. Uh, so let's give it a legend of, I think it'll pull it in in order. So I think it'll pull it in as hip, knee, <clears throat> ankle. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, ooh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you can see there, man, ankle doing 52% work. Let's just look over here, make sure that that is the ankle. Relative pause, 52. Uh, the knee, relative pause, 17. And then, yeah, 30. So that's right. All right, let's go ahead and do this for the um, negative work, too, then, since we know how to do this now. We'll just copy this, paste it here, change our names accordingly. And we'll just go ahead and put it on the same same plot here. So subplot, um, we'll do one row, two columns. Grab that. And then this is in position two. These will be negative work. All right, let's go ahead and run this, get a little graphic. Oh, Pi's kind of slow. Hey, there we go. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And now we can look at the distribution. So during positive work, you can see the ankle doing a lot. Over half of the, the mechanical work during walking for this particular person on this particular step is being done at the ankle joint, which is pretty incredible. Um, it really shows you how important the ankle is for walking. And then in negative work, you can see the distributions are a little bit more even. The knee is doing um, a lot more negative work, relative negative work, um, than it is doing relative positive work. So the distributions do change between um, the types of mechanical work being done. Now, just to give you kind of a, a brief idea of one, th one potential use case for these relative works, um, it's something that Dr. Greg uh, Sawicki did a, a few years ago was he looked at walking and running at the same speed. It was relatively fast walking speed, relatively slow running speed, and um, relative ankle joint work went way higher in running compared to walking. And that's likely because people are um, shifting work towards the ankle because of its passive structure. It's uh, a little bit more um, mechanically and energetically efficient because it's got a long Achilles tendon. So the amount of mechanical work being done by the muscle, um, the muscle doesn't have to displace as much. The, you can get a lot of the, the displacement from the muscle tendon unit comes from the tendon and not the muscle. And so that means the work is being done uh, more passively, which is less energetically expensive. So that's just one use case. Another use case is to look at the relative distributions um, across different tasks to try to figure out, you know, what joint is important for this task versus this other task, things like that. So there are a lot of different use cases for this. Okay, if you like that video, found it uh, useful, go ahead and give it a like, um, share it, subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be posting a lot of stuff like this as well as some of the other programming stuff that I work on. I do some web development and I'm also doing some database type stuff now. Um, so yeah, go ahead and give this a share. Check me out on Twitter. You can see me on um, YouTube, of course, on LinkedIn, and you can also get access to a lot of these codes on GitHub. If these aren't on GitHub, please feel free. Just reach out to me. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to share most of this stuff. All right, take it easy. Keep coding.